Well, the United Nations Refugee Agency says it tried to stop Qatar from deporting al Abedi, but their attempts were ignored. We want to speak to the UNHCR now. Sibylla Wilkes joins us from Geneva. Ms. Wilkes, thank you very much for being with us. We understand that the representative from the UNHCR was at the hotel, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, he was at the hotel, and but was denied entry and denied any access to her. Um, what have you heard now? Have you spoken to the, the Qatari government at all? Well, we, we, have, we have been in touch with the Qatari government, but I think that the key point is that they didn't listen to us. Mm -hmm. um, we asked for them to allow us to take Ms. Obaidi to um, Romania. We had fixed up a flight for her to go on, um, but she was forced to go on a plane back to Libya. What reasons did the Qatari government give you? Actually, I don't, I don't have the reasons, and I don't believe that there are any justifiable reasons for returning somebody that is recognized as a refugee. What happens to her now in terms of what kind of, uh, uh, I guess, routes will you be taking, will the UNHCR be taking now to try and, I guess, ensure her security and safety, if, it's that, if that's possible, it, where she is now in Benghazi? Well, I just heard from, from colleagues that they are en route to meet with Ms. Albedi. And um, we, our, our main priority will be to ensure that her wishes are respected at this point. So um, we, will, we will be meeting with her and hearing what she and her family want to do next. Are discussions continuing with the Qatari government in terms to give some sort of, I guess, a, a, a real dialogue to, find, to get to the bottom of this? Um, well, right now the priority is obviously for Ms. al safety, so our priority is really to ensure that she's safe in Benghazi and that her, her wishes are respected as to what she wants to do next. Who will the UNHCR be dealing with, uh, with within Libya? Are you dealing with the National Transitional Council? That's right. We'll be dealing with the National Transitional Council and, and anyone else that is concerned with her case. And is the, is the next step to try and get her out of Libya? It all depends on, on what she wants to do next. And uh, I guess uh, the difficulties, describe for us the difficulties in dealing with uh, Libya at this point. Well, it's, it's, it's obviously a, a, a challenging environment to be working in. Um, uh, my colleague that um, is, is, is on her way to be meeting with uh, Ms. al Baidi has just come off a boat herself from Misrata. So, you know, we, we obviously have, have, have our challenges of working there, but this, this is a top priority for us. We understand, uh, obviously, Ms. al uh, uh case has been disturbing and it continues to be disturbing, but hers, I understand, would just be one of many many within Libya. Give us an idea of the kind of, uh, I guess, the, the case numbers that you're working on. Well, no one has actually been able to quantify um, the number of, of women, of children that, that have suffered rape, that have suffered violence in this conflict, but it's obviously very high. I was just on the phone this morning to my colleague um, who, who was yesterday in Misrata, and she, she was telling me that there are thousands of people that are displaced, that there are some families in, in Misrata that now have seven or eight families living with them, and, and many of those families have missing family members um, and indeed are, are, are claiming that, that some of their family members have been kidnapped. And before I let you go, Ms. Wilkes, in terms of Ms. Olobedi's case, and, and, and forgive me if you've already answered this question, but uh, have the UNHCR, are, they, are you in contact with her or people around her and is she safe? Well, we do understand that she's safe and I'll be able to tell you more later after our staff have actually met with her. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Sibylla Wilkes from the UNHCR in Geneva.